Hello, this is Dr. Ari Malavi coming to you from Ask Dr. Malavi series. Today's topic is on botched liposuction. How do you get them and how do you fix them definitively? So let's begin our talk today on botched liposuction. What are we talking about? We're talking about botched liposuction, obviously. You guys, it's when you get liposuction done and when you look at yourself in the mirror, maybe a month or two after your surgery, you're like, this doesn't look quite like I thought it should. What we're talking about is irregularities in the contour, divots, cavitations, unevenness, asymmetry, cellulite, you name it. Anything that makes the contour not optimal and also irregular in consistency and texture and overall a disappointment. So those are botched liposuction results. And we see botched liposuction results weekly. I do video casts. I do a lot of... Uh, video uh, consultations or virtual consultations and i can't tell you how many botched results i see daily you guys so let's start this topic and let's begin by reviewing the anatomy of the skin and the fat so we have our skin and we have our muscle and then we have fat in between and that's the layer that we're trying to remove optimally smoothly uniformly to create beautiful contour lines okay so let's get going here. What we're talking about is that the fat layer between the skin and the muscle is actually divided into two layers. There's the superficial layer. It's usually thinner and it's right underneath the skin. And then there's a little fascial plane that separates the superficial layer from the deep layer. The deep layer is typically thicker in girth um, and it has most of the fat in there. And I'll give you some interesting tidbits about the differences in the two layers. Let's just begin by talking about the superficial layer. The superficial layer, again, is the thin layer. And it's very compartmentalized is the word that we use. It's because there's these pillars, literally these pillars are collagen-like, um, finger-like extensions that really traverse that entire plane and, and compartmentalize all the little fat cells. Um, these things are also called fibroceptal network. Um, they're kind of a netting, like a web, if you can imagine a web that really um, keeps your skin together. It, it, they're, it's crucial for the skin integrity. It, it's what keeps your skin from just being loose and, and flopping everywhere. Um, now, as we go from this layer, which is the thinner layer, to the deeper layer, that deeper layer is called the loose areolar plane. And it's because it's very loose. It's just full of fat. There's very, very little ligamentous structures, very little fibroceptal network of those retaining cutaneous ligaments, those pillars that we were talking about. And this fat layer is actually the fat layer that we've traditionally been able to access and remove, okay? So we have the thin superficial layer, we have the deeper, thicker fat. Now, interestingly, as another tidbit for you all is, the difference between a really lean person and a chubbier um, guy or gal is that it's our deep fat that is dynamic. It's the deep fat that we lose and gain when we gain weight or lose weight. The superficial layer pretty much stays constant. It changes a little bit, but nothing in comparison to the deeper layer, all right? So now we have an understanding of the two layers of fat, the superficial, thinner, more constant fat, and the deeper, looser, uh, more dynamic fat that can gain and lose uh, when you lose weight or gain weight. Um, now, that's the anatomy we're talking about. Next, I would like to talk to you about the cannulas. The cannulas in liposuction are those rods. They're hollow bore, meaning that, that there's a lumen inside, and then the tip has these little tiny holes, okay? So what happens when we do liposuction, traditionally at least, we would take this cannula and push it into that deeper layer. And really, you have to remove the deep layer uniformly and constantly, okay? The guys who are good at liposuction are able to remove that fat as uniformly as you can imagine. In fact, we often attack an area from multiple vectors. Um, we like to attack any given area from at least three different vectors and that allows us to cross hatch 
meaning we, we, we hit it. Because imagine we're using these little cannulas. And so every time you go in and out, you're taking out a tunnel of fat. Well, if you can cross hatch them, you're more likely to get a uniform result. And that's the name of the game. All right. So here we go. We have these cannulas, literally, that we're trying to bore out the fat. And whoever who can do it more uniformly is going to get better results. Got it? Now, what you have to appreciate about these cannulas is they're pretty thick and gauge. And when you're trying to remove an area and crosshatch, okay, you can only liposuction in the deep layer because that superficial layer, first of all, is compartmentalized. So if you were to try to stick your cannula in there, what would happen is after you went through one or two or three pillars, it would get stuck and wedged. In essence, there's no way that you can uniformly remove the fat. Okay, you guys? That's what we're dealing with. It's, 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 these are the facts, okay? So traditional liposuction where we use cannulas to pierce through the semi-solid fat, because our fat is semi-solid, it's in clusters of fat that are connected and interlinked, thus making it semi-solid. You can only remove the deep fat because if, and the reason for this is because you gotta remove fat uniformly. If you don't remove the fat uniformly, that's when you get into trouble. That's when you get a botched liposuction result, okay? So the guys who do this well, they're able to completely and uniformly, at least they try to completely remove all the fat. If you don't do a good job in the deep fat, remember, you still have that superficial layer of fat that's almost like a cushion, like a camouflage. So let's say you're not so great at this and you're not able to remove all the fat uniformly, but you have this layer of cushion, the superficial fat that smoothens out the level field. In addition, if your skin is tight, right, you're gonna, it's gonna be more forgiving because it's not gonna show the irregularity in fat removal in the deep area, okay? So the first botched liposuction I want to talk to you about is asymmetry or waviness. If there's waviness or like, let's say one side is um, contoured more than the other. All that means is that your liposuction provider did not remove the fat evenly and uniformly. Either they took out more fat from one side or the other, or um, they just couldn't take out the fat and they left you with a little bit of waviness. Okay. Let me give you a secret here, you guys. Typically what will happen is the, if your surgeon is right hand dominant, then he's gonna have an easier time taking out the right side. So usually the sides that are left more generous are the contralateral sides. One of the ways that we counter this is we always start on the counter, the opposite side, so the patient's left side, and then I come and do my side, which is the easier side, meaning my ipsy side, and then I go back to the other side, my contralateral side. So I actually do the opposite side twice, knowing that I'm gonna do a better job on my side. That's a secret for you all. But let's, let's continue. So botched liposuction causes, or first, waviness or asymmetry. And this is done, or, or this occurs, when your liposuction provider cannot remove the fat evenly, both within one area as well as evenly with regards to left and right, okay? The second botched liposuction job that I see are divots or like literal like ravines. And this is caused by the cavalier liposuction uh, provider who is again, a traditional liposuction provider who actually goes all in and tries to remove more fat than he or she should. Basically what happens is they want to do a great job for you and so they end up doing all the deep liposuction, get all of the deep out, and then they're like, you know what, I'm going to press it this time. I'm going to try to get rid of some of that superficial fat. And that's where you go wrong. You see, because that cannula cannot evenly remove the deep fat because it's compartmentalized, right? So that's, this is what we're talking about, you guys. Traditional liposuction is limited to a debulking procedure. You can only take out the deep fat and you cannot take out the superficial fat. If you try, you're gonna really botch it up. In the abdomen, often we call this the checkerboard abdomen. It's a belly that someone's tried to basically high def using traditional tools, and they've tried to take out that superficial fat and it becomes a mess, like a checkerboard. It's uneven, full of dimples and fullnesses, and it doesn't look pretty, all right? 
the third cause of botched liposuction, and this is probably most frequent thing that I see now, is leaving too much skin. When we review our high definition body contouring principles, we will be reminded that when you're doing high end body contouring, you have to weigh the fat and the skin, fat and skin, fat and skin. If you have a lot of skin or a moderate amount of skin, you better not remove all the fat unless you're gonna do something with the skin. Again, remember what I taught you, the skin is forgiving. If it's tight, it'll save you from showing your underlying irregularities if you don't uniformly remove the fat. On the same token, if the skin is redundant, meaning it's loose already, and you try to come and take out the fat, even if you do a pretty good job at removing the fat, what will happen is that the skin on top is gonna get even more loose. One of the problems with loose skin is that it doesn't know how to behave. So even if you were to do a beautiful liposuction job and you just had extra skin left behind, it doesn't know how to lay back down evenly and smoothly. In fact, it gets crinkled. And this is when it looks really botched. Um, I can't tell you how many patients I see weekly who've been botched. Um, often they've gone to another country to save some money and then they learn their lesson. Um, but this can happen anywhere, okay? I, I, um, I'm a trainer for uh, a machine that we will talk about later in this podcast, but I see um, results and I see the beautiful results and often I see some um, suboptimal results and typically it's because the skin has not been addressed on. Let's just, let's just put the facts straight now, okay? Today, in today's high definition body contouring arena, Skin redundancy is a bigger problem than excess fat, okay? Today's age, we can remove the fat, but the skin now has to be addressed because if you leave skin irregularity, I'm sorry, skin redundancy, what'll happen is it'll settle unevenly and unnaturally and create irregularities. And this is um, the topic of botched liposuction that I uh, most like to correct. So. Let's get into this topic a little, dive a little deeper in this topic. Today's liposuction gold standards are high definition liposuction. How you get high definition liposuction is we use ultrasound assisted liposuction techniques. The most popular branded company is called Vaser, that's V-A-S-E-R, and it allows us to remove fat comprehensively. Let me explain. Not only are we removing all the deep fat, like traditional did, but we're also able to remove the superficial fat selectively. So how does this happen? The vasor rod is thin enough that it can go into both the deep and the superficial layers, okay? Deep and superficial. And it can completely, we call it cavitate, or melt the fat into a liquid state. So what we're doing is we're taking that fat and we're taking it from a semi-solid clustered state to a single cell liquid state, okay? And we can do it in both layers, the superficial and the deep. And then with high definition protocols, we're going in with our same traditional like cannulas that we put in the deep layer as well. However, because the full depth of the fat, both the superficial and the deep have been liquefied, we're able to suck out or siphon out all the fat we siphon out all the deep fat for sure, and then we selectively siphon out the superficial fat when we want to create highlights, and we want to create muscle definition, and we want to create that extra special look. The four pack in the ladies, the six pack um, in the men, um, the maximal waistline narrowing where the, where the skin hugs your um, flank muscles, the external obliques, the serratuses. This is where the magic occurs. Now, stop the press because this is also where trouble can ensue. Remember, the more pulp you have, let's think of a fruit, the more, the more pulp you have, the tighter the shell or the skin's gonna be. So now that with high definition body contouring principles, we have the opportunity to remove even more fat or i.e. more pulp, we have to be cognizant that we might be left with more skin. More skin means more irregularities and a more opportunity to get a botched liposuction result, okay? So 
What I want to talk to you about is the definitive correction of botched liposuction. It involves redoing the liposuction to remove all the fat because if we have contour irregularities due to fat excess or fat unevenness, we have to even the playing field, okay? So with vasor liposuction or ultrasound assisted liposuction, how we correct botched liposuction jobs is that we remove all the fat. We have to, there is no other way. There is today, in today's age, there's no way to go in and add more fat into the dimples and the little divots. It's impossible. Cause it's not like a marking pen or a, a pencil or a drawing pen. We can't just fill in the holes or fill in the gaps. We actually have to go in there and now remove any and all of the remaining fat and even often some of the scar tissue that's been left behind. We have to just bring down everything on block, okay? Now, you guessed it. What is the repercussion of doing that? Yes, you're gonna get even fat playing fields now because you've evened out everything. However, in the case of the skin irregularity, you may be causing a secondary deformity, but we avoid that using our high definition body contouring principles. So what I've done is I've created the high definition high definition liposuction body scale and we've talked about this on a separate video cast so i invite you all to go there to check out that video cast but what we're talking about now is how i make sure that i don't leave skin redundancy using my hdl body scale i score every patient's anatomic region that i'm treating and one of the regions that we um, i'm sorry so what happens is we we grade you, okay? And so the grade goes between a two and a 10. And I promise everybody a nine or a 10, right? And so the question becomes is how do I bring an eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two up to a nine or a 10? And the grading scale is based on not only excess fat that we've been talking about, but skin redundancy as well as skin texture, which we'll get into. Um, so here you have it, you guys. I am removing all the fat, right? So I have to address the skin redundancy. So if you have minimal to moderate, if you, let's just start with the minimal. If you have minimal skin redundancy, what happens is there's something called skin redraping. By virtue of taking out all the fat from the superficial layer, um, it, your body works like um, the fat in the body works like a little sponge. And remember those retaining ligaments that I talked to you about, those fibroceptal collagen rope-like pillars? What happens is when you remove the fat from that area, the skin tightens back. It's almost like these ropes have spring-like qualities, but they're cushioned with the fat. And once you remove the fat, the skin just snaps back. There's a skin redraping that occurs. So minimal skin redundancy takes care of itself, okay? Moderate skin redundancy is addressed by using a novel machine that we have now called the Renuvion. The Renuvion allows us, uh, well, it's a technology that fuses um, helium activated plasma technology with radio frequency in such a way that it tightens up all these little rope-like st rope -like structures as well as tightening up the underneath layer of the skin. Basically, anywhere where you have a collagen molecule will shrink wrap and tighten. It'll get tightened right before your eyes and it's instant. It's nothing that you have to wait for. It happens right away. So when we're done liposuctioning, I sit back and I go through all the areas that have liposuction and, air, and any area that looks loose I will do the Renuvion on there. The Renuvion subdermal coagulation is beautiful because it uses this magic wand and you go through the same porthole, the same portholes that you used before to lipo. So you don't have to add any more scarring or incision line. And literally right before your eyes, it will tighten the skin, okay? And then we get to the moderate, severe and severe skin redundancy. In these patients, which range anywhere from three to two to four and some fives on my scale, we have to actually cut out skin. We will cut out skin. I will not compromise your contour by leaving redundant skin because of wanting to avoid an incision line. Remember, incision lines will heal. Now we place these incision lines strategically so they're hidden. We obviously do not put a scar right in the middle of an area that you want to look beautiful, but we use adjacent areas to strategically 
tuck away the skin so the skin is tight. Well, there you have it in a nutshell, you guys. Botched liposuction body contouring results, what it is, and how to fix them using HDL body contouring principles as well as specialized tools. The days of botched liposuction are behind us, everybody. And I want to thank everybody for joining me today on this video cast. I also want to remind everybody to send your questions to askdrmalavi at cpsi360.com. Thank you.